If you're ready to see if Coda can automate the same things that Airtable and Zapier can, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna be building out some more complicated automations, some of them using buttons inside of Coda. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to build no and low code solutions to automate and streamline everything. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we can help, swing by our website. I will include some links in the description below. But without further ado, let's just get into this video. So if you're just joining us, we already have a functioning system built in Airtable and Zapier that runs our business uh, very, very smoothly. But we learned about Coda and wanted to explore it and see if it could do the same awesome things. And I'll be honest with you, there are some places that Coda does some cool things that, quite honestly, Airtable can't do. One of those being the automations that occur inside of the, uh, the system of Coda itself. And that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at today. But to paint the picture here, we can just jump into my screen and let me set by starting, or let me start by setting the stage. So what we're doing right now at this point in the workflow is talking about after an initial consultation has occurred, there are a few different outcomes that can happen. Now, maybe somebody doesn't show up or maybe they're not a good fit. Fine, no actions taken. But if they're a good fit, there are two different ways that our firm can assist. One is we offer training and coaching. And so for that, there's a proposal and we have a few different offers. We can send out that proposal and uh, you know, just give them that in email or give, give them that in writing in an email so that they can review that and then maybe make a decision to move forward with our training programs. The other option is we might just build it for them outright. Sometimes people will want to hire us and just say, hey, we want you just to develop the whole thing for us. Either way, great, but we need different steps to happen. If they say, hey, we want to hear more about development, then they're going to get a different email, obviously a much higher price point, and then next steps need to happen there. They get an introduction to our project manager and other things. Whereas if they want to go with the coaching, then they're just going to get the coaching options and then let us know if they want to proceed. So anyway, long story short, there's different outcomes from this thing and we need to set that all up. Now you might remember from last the last video in the series that we've set it up so that when these consultations occur, we see the person that we're meeting with. In this case, I'm saying that I'm meeting with myself and their email. Uh, we see what they want to talk about on this consultation. We can take some notes here. And this is going to be helpful for our team as this uh, you know relationship continues. That way our team can know what we talked about on our initial meetings. And then an outcome is selected. Now, only on the condition where we select good fit do we want to get these buttons. Now, buttons are this ability inside of Coda that is really, really cool. So this is just a view of the consultation table. So let me take us back to the consultation table and we're going to get a look at what these buttons actually do. Now, you're going to notice if you're following along that there are some new fields here as well. And I'm going to describe exactly why I've created a checkbox for coaching proposal and intro to PM project manager. Let's first take a look at the coaching button itself. We're going to go ahead and format the button here. And if I can get it to show us what we need, we've got two different things that we want to highlight. Now, of course, the button has its own label and a color and we can put icons. That's all great. But the, the functionality is going to come into the disable and the action. So the disable is where we say, hey, we don't want this button to be pushed unless it, or in the case where these conditions are met, this button you cannot access. And so if we drop into here, you'll see that we're saying if the outcome is not equal to good fit, that means if we haven't selected good fit from this consultation, we can't push the button as you just saw demonstrated a moment ago. Or if coaching proposal has already been sent, if that's true, then we don't want this button to be activated again. So let's take a look at, at this little portion right here, right? We have this coaching proposal sent checkbox. And the very reason for this is we only want to send a coaching proposal once per consultation. And if the button is just able to be pushed over and over again, then we're going to rerun the same automation. And so what we've set this up to do is when we push the button the first time, it will also check this box. And you notice that once that box gets checked, we can no longer push the button. 
right? And that all comes down to, again, that is all here in this disable. So we're saying when coaching proposal sent is checked true, disable this button. Okay, so that's the first part. We've got two rules for disabling. We don't wanna spam people with the coaching proposal over and over again. So we're making sure that they're both a good fit and that they haven't received uh, uh, a proposal from us before. Okay, so that's how we choose if it's enabled or disabled. Now for adding these actions. You'll notice that when we push this button, two things happen. First, we are gonna add a row in a new table called coaching PDF trigger. And we are going to add the contact of that row is going to match the contact of this row. Meaning that when we push this button, we're creating a new row in another table with the same contact information. Now, the, that's the first step. The second step here is we're modifying this row and we are marking the coaching proposal sent to be true. And this is, again, how we make sure that we don't spam or accidentally send this multiple times. So in this case, the formula logic looks a little bit more complex than things that we've seen in Airtable. But when we get it dialed in, and it took me a few tries, so don't get discouraged. But once we get it dialed in, it works like a charm. And the best part is this is all inside of our Coda doc, not having to do with Zapier at all. Now, why did we create a new row in a new table. This whole coaching PDF trigger is a new table. Let me go ahead and bring us down here to my triggers. And I've got a bunch of fake examples here so far. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and test this out from our perspective. In fact, let me delete all of these previous examples and delete that. And so we've got two new, uh, two new tables, the coaching PDF trigger and the development intro trigger. Now, the reason we built new tables is if we go into Zapier and we go specifically into our new, let me find our right zap here. This is our coaching proposal zap. You'll notice that when we trigger from Coda, in Airtable, we can say we only want to trigger off of a new view or rather, excuse me, a record that appeared in a specific view. So we can set up a view in Airtable that says when a record comes in here, then trigger this automation. So we don't need to create a new record per se, we just set up rules that say when it meets these this view criteria. Coda doesn't work that way. Inside of Coda, when we've connected it to our account and then set it up to the right document, we only have one trigger event option and that is new row. We have to have a new row inside of Coda and that's the only way that we can trigger from Coda. And so rather than uh, you know, trying to set up all these rules and whatnot inside of Coda itself, we just instead say, well, we're gonna create a new row in a trigger specifically for this automation. And so then we create the coaching PDF trigger and we tell this particular Zapier automation to watch this specific table. Now this table is only gonna get data into it when we've marked that box back on our coaching next steps. So let's go ahead and pop this box real quick. Now two things are gonna happen. We're gonna see this box get checked right here and a new row will appear in our trigger table, right? So let's pop it open. There it goes, the box was checked as planned and here is that new row in our trigger table. Now again, all of these other pieces of data here, the company, the first name, the full name, the email, that's all tied to our contact. So all of that came in and is, uh, is dependent upon the contact that we linked here. Now Zapier in the background is gonna run its process and it's gonna find this new row in Coda, specifically in this coaching PDF trigger table. And then the Zap automation will perform a format on the date time. It's gonna create a PDF in DocuPilot, which I've done a previous video on. And then it's gonna send an email to, uh, via Gmail. And so once all of that is said and done, let's see if that actually uh, has transpired or maybe I'll run this manually here. And it's found that new row and it's performing that automation now. And so that, uh, that will be received in my email inbox in just a moment. So let's go ahead and pop into email and take a look. It was just received and this is what the client uh, is gonna see. 
They're going to get a nice email with a PDF attachment with a, a coaching proposal that was created just for them. Uh, looks like I have a formatting issue here that I need to clean up. Thank goodness we're testing it. And, uh, and you know, they have all of this uh, information here that is specific for them. So very cool. That automation is working really nicely. And so let's look at the other outcome of this. The other possible outcome, if we go back to consultations, is perhaps we want to set up the next steps for development. Now here, a similar thing has been set forth, right? We have to disable it. In the case where we've already made an introduction to our project manager, if that's checked, we want this to not be pushed. And also we need to make sure that they're a good fit. So same thing as before. Now this time we're running some different actions. In this case, we wanna create a new row in our development intro trigger table. So that's the other table that we were looking at. And again, we want to match with the same contact information from here. And we want to modify this row and check that box for intro to PM. So let's scroll back over there and take a look. Pop this button here. There we go, intro to PM is checked so we can no longer select this button. If we fly into our trigger table here, our development intro trigger now has this new row. And so we can then run this Zapier automation, which is going to do an email introduction between our uh, client and project manager so that they can uh, do their next steps. All right, here's that email that came through. Uh, so it's an introduction then to our project manager and it goes into des a description on how our, you know, how that other facet of our business works. So in short, we're able to build all of this inside of Coda and rely very little on Zapier to communicate with other softwares. At this point, I would say the biggest difference between Airtable and Coda is that I have the ability to create these automations internal to the dock. And it almost, it, it feels more like having your own little app inside of Coda, whereas for anything to occur inside of Airtable, I need to build this you know, more complex automation using Zapier. So the big takeaway for me here is that I can have all these things change and update from these buttons inside of Coda as opposed to necessarily running with some third-party software. Now, of course, at some point, I still need to plug into third-party software, so it's not that much of a time save, but in a lot of cases, it is easier just to build it right there in the dock. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week, we also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.